Good morning, sisters and brothers, and uh, welcome to our morning prayer this Wednesday morning, uh, Wednesday the 14th of April, and I trust that you are well this morning. And so let's get straight into our prayer to begin our new day, a new day that God has given us, a new day that we do not deserve, but by his grace we are here. And so we offer our lives to him, we offer ourselves to him another day. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our collect. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay. And our psalm for this morning, psalm is Psalm 30. Psalm 30, three zero, psalm number 30. <clears throat> Psalm 30 I will exalt you Lord for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me Lord my God I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. 
When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Amen. Amen. So we are, the, the psalmist in, 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 in this psalm, uh, it must be David, I think, he, is, he recognizes that God is a, is a God who, produce, who gives joy, joy in the midst of sorrow, joy in the midst of the difficulties that he's going through. And so he, in verse 5, that your anger lasts only for a moment, but your favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping endure for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. There's that recognition that God brings lasting joy to our souls. And verse, and verse 11, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. There's a sense of joy that's going through the psalm. That God brings joy to our hearts. Uh, and, and, and yes, there is weeping. Yes, there is time of mourning. But only for a short while. When the weeping is over, when the mourning is over, joy comes. Uh, this, this comment from Keller. This is a song of grace, he says. While God may, can be angry with his people, anger is never the final word. And so joy is always on the way, always coming to those who believe in Jesus. In Jesus, this principle goes even further to sorrow producing joy in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Jesus' grief and suffering produced joy for both him and us. And now, when we trust in him during dark times, our sorrow can also produce the joy of increased faith and spiritual reality. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, let's, uh, let's move on. The New Testament reading is... Um, is John chapter 20, John's gospel, chapter 20, from verse 19 to the end. <clears throat> John 20, verse 19 to the end. <clears throat> On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were, on, were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out in your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. And so we have the story, sisters and brothers, of so-called doubting Thomas. Thomas, I believe, has, um, has had, had a, a difficult time throughout church history because he's seen as the one who will not believe unless he sees. And in a sense, Jesus kind of scolded him and said, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who don't see, but believe, which is you and I, you, the rest of us who have not seen with our physical eyes, even though we see with the eye of faith. So we are blessed, not because we see, but because we believe. But I don't think Thomas, uh, Tom, Thomas is wrong, was wrong. <clears throat> there are two things about Thomas. Probably the first one is that Thomas needed to see for himself because he was going to be one of the foundation apostles to testify to the resurrection now unless he saw for himself he would not be one of those persons to testify to the resurrection and so the, all the others saw Thomas needed to see as well so that's the first thing he couldn't have been one of the eyewitnesses and so, so in a sense you would have this imbalance a uh, second class citizen in the disciples in the apostles, uh, all the others, the other 10 saw and believed and poor Thomas over here believed their word and took their word for it, but didn't get to see. So Thomas needed to see in order to be one of the foundation apostles or eyewitnesses to the, to the resurrection of Jesus. So that was needed. And, uh, but, 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 Paul, but Thomas's point is that unless I have proof, unless I have evidence, unless I have something tangible to show that this is true, I will not believe it. And there is a sense in which um, the Christian faith has always said that. You know, Christ, sisters and brothers, faith is not blind. Can I just say that again? Faith is not a blind leap in the dark. At least Christian faith is not a blind leap in the dark. The, the, our faith is built on solid facts, evidence. Now, Thomas needed to see that evidence because he needed to testify, like the rest of the disciples, that, that, is, that it's in fact true. So, but, but once you believe Thomas and the other disciples, once you believe that there were credible witnesses. The, your belief is based on their evidence. Your belief, my belief, is based on the evidence that the disciples, the first apostles saw. I believe what they say because I believe that they were credible. The woman, Mary Magdalene, was a credible witness to the resurrection. I believe these people didn't make it up. They didn't lie. They, so, so, so 
our belief is based on evidence. The evidence, the fact of the resurrection. It's not a blind leap in the dark, sisters and brothers. It's not a faith that says, if Jesus didn't rise, it doesn't matter because I have him living in my heart. No, no, no. It's a faith that is built on the fact of Jesus' resurrection. And so there is a sense that, that there is room, there is room in the Christian faith for, for um, doubt, for, 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 for us to, to not be gullible. <laughs> we need, and, and this, is, but this is where I, you know, this, this is an issue for me, especially in an age of fake news and conspiracy theories. You know, Christians should be the people who do not believe that stuff because we believe in truth based in reality. What we believe is not some fairy fantasy. We believe in uh, uh, the resurrection of Jesus that actually happened. Now, you and I may not have seen it happen, but Thomas and the other disciples and the woman, they saw it happen. And they are credible witnesses. Now, the only, the only thing that would go against that is if their witness, if you say they are not credible witnesses, uh, we, have, we don't have any reason to believe them, but we don't have any reason to doubt them. Because, they, you know, they, well, for all sorts of reasons. <laughs> I can't go into that this morning. And so, so, so there, is a, there is room in the faith for a healthy doubt, doubting of information. Not just not, not doubting Jesus' resurrection, but doubting information when we, when we receive them. Not believing everything we hear without saying like Thomas, unless you can provide evidence, I will not believe it. Sisters and brothers, we need that healthy doubt in our lives. And so don't, let's, not, let's not blame Thomas for being doubting. Thomas's doubt was healthy. And if it wasn't healthy, Jesus would not have uh, rewarded him with, with bringing, with showing him himself. Um, so yes, we need healthy doubt. We should not believe everything that we hear or everything that we see. Now, you know, even, even today, not everything we see. We need healthy doubt. But at the same time, once we have established, once we have established the credibility of the evidence or the witnesses, we should believe. And, the, and for us, sisters and brothers, the credibility of the disciples is, is perfectly established. And so what they claim to see and, and to, uh, 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 is something that we can believe because they knew, they saw it, Thomas saw it, and all the others saw the risen Christ. And therefore, we believe on their testimony. We believe because they are credible. We can believe because we believe them. We believe what they told us. And they have no reason to lie. And so here we have it. Let's move on into this world, sisters and brothers, with this healthy doubt, questioning things, asking for proof, asking for evidence. But at the same time, there must come a time when we say, when we, when we accept the, the, as the facts, and, and, you know, we pray for people in our world who have yet to accept the fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, I, I'm praying for Muslims during Ramadan. They are going through that time of Ramadan right now. And every year I pray for Muslims as they go through these 30 days of fasting that, that somehow they will see the risen Christ like Thomas, that, that, that the risen Lord Jesus Christ will appear to Muslims everywhere in the world. 
here in the UK, in the Muslim world. And like Thomas, they will see the nails in his hands and they will fall on their knees like Thomas and say, my Lord and my God, in worship of this Jesus. That's my prayer, sisters and brothers. And so let's pray together. Of course, for all people, but especially during this Ramadan period, for Muslims to, for their eyes to be open to see Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. You know, they are zealous, but their, their, their zeal is not for truth. Their zeal is based on a lie. We have the truth, sisters and brothers. You and I, we have the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because we believe Thomas and the others. And now, all we need is that they be convinced. Others, my neighbors, the people next door, the people of other faith, for them to be convinced that this is the truth. That Jesus is alive and that changes all of reality. Amen. Let's pray. So Lord, we thank you for this new day that you've given us. We, we are grateful, Lord God, for your grace to sustain us. And we thank you for, for doubt. We always thank you for faith. Well, Lord, we thank you for doubt. For times when... We must doubt things that we hear and seek evidence, seek uh, the, the proof of these things. Because, Lord, truth is so um, is, is is such an important uh, is so important for our lives that we we do not have the luxury of believing lies and false truths and conspiracies. And so, Lord. In this sense, help us to be like Thomas, to say, unless you can prove it to me, I will not believe it. And yet, Lord, help us to be like Thomas, and even though we have not seen the truth of the resurrection, even though we have not seen the risen Christ, we believe. And you have promised us a blessing. A blessing to all those who believe but, don't, uh, but have not seen. All those, like many of us throughout history, who have never seen the risen Christ, but have believed through the evidence, through the witness of the disciples. And so, Lord, we thank you so that for this belief that we have, uh, moving from doubt to belief, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we thank you for both. We thank you for healthy doubt. We thank you for steadfast faith in the resurrection of Christ. And we pray, Lord, for others who may still be in doubt about this truth, about the reality of the resurrection. We, we pray for those who are still doubting, who are still wavering, who are still not sure. Lord, we pray that they will move from doubt to believe, from shaky faith to steadfast faith. Lord, we pray for them. There are some we know, some in our own community, some of our, our neighbors. But also we pray, Lord, as we've been praying for Muslims during this time of Ramadan, that they too will move into faith, that they will either physically or with the eyes of faith, see the risen Christ and move into faith, believing like Thomas, my Lord and my God, in worship to Jesus Christ. And so we pray for Muslims. We pray for those in this community. We pray for those all over the world, for their salvation in Jesus. And so Lord, save Save the Muslim community, we pray. Save them and change their lives. Transform them by the risen Christ, the power of the risen Christ. We pray that they will come to know him. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, amen. So Lord, we dedicate this day to you.
<clears throat> and we pray that you will strengthen us for the journey today. Give us your grace, we pray, and help us to rejoice in our weakness. Help us, Lord, to be strong. Help us, O oh God, that, that we will, our weeping may only last for a while, but our joy will last for all eternity. And so, Lord, give us a joy today, we pray. Whatever we're doing, wherever we're going, watch over our steps and keep us safe. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his all-sufficient grace to guide you and sustain you today, sisters and brothers, in all that you do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, one and all.